if you want to catch big fish you have to use big bait. On this episode of FCO Fishing NZ we are targeting kingfish on live baits. At a 45 degree angle. Watch as we show you some of the best tips for fishing with live baits. And it's there ready to go. And that's got a bit of give so it doesn't break away unless the kingy comes along and eats your live bait. We're using my favourite technique for catching live baits which is trolling with a hand line with a power vane and a small silver lure. It just seems to be the most effective way to catch live baits. My preferred live baits kahawai, um, usually in the sort of half kilo to up to two kilo size. A lot of guys say how big a kahawai do you need to use? It doesn't really matter because a kingfish will eat any size kahawai. I've had them eat three and a half kilo size kahawai baits and you'll catch a big kingy. They're right here. The best way to find schooling kawai is to look for the terns, also known as kahawai birds. Ready to go. Been out here for an hour now or so and it's time to get the boat. The reason we use cord hand lines is so we can bring the kawai to the boat quickly and get them in the live bait tank. As well as this, cord does not tangle like mono. That's all they need to be. On the back of a paravane is two metres of 60 pound black magic trace that we tie our silver lure to. Also your sounder will show you where the schools of bait are holding. Caught a few smaller kawai baits now, but it would be really good to get a few of the bigger ones simply because you start putting out those little kawai and you can end up catching small undersized kingfish, which nobody really wants to do. So here we go, let's try and get some of these bigger ones that are floating around here. We had to work very hard to catch enough bait. It took almost two hours to get enough for a day's fishing. We've been working pretty hard to get our bait. We finally found a little patch that's working. We're not getting big baits as Richard said, but like I say, um, I'd rather have uh, little baits than no baits. And when you're collecting baits for days kingy fishing, probably about 10 live baits is, is a good number. Because that usually, if the fishing's good, you know, you would have caught heaps of kingies once you got 10. And the fishing's poor, you haven't caught too many kawai, you can sashimi them up later for a feed. With a tank full of great live baits, it was quickly off to the local kingfish hotspots. I only hoped we had not missed the tide run. After trying three or four spots, we found one where the water was looking good and there was plenty of current. Strike it, Jamie. Go rip it. Put it yep. in here, Jamie. Hold on to it, hold on to it. Put your rod up, hold your rod up. Here we go. Going on there, Jamie. Mate, you've, you've, you've delivered on your part of the bargain. I'm finding them now. I just have to get this guy to the boat. We lead the fish away from the reef by applying minimal pressure to the line. This is a tactic that we have employed to get many huge kingfish away from an area where they could bust you off. There you go. You're in. So we're taking them out to about 20 to 25 metres of water now, just still leading them out a bit further. Um, and in not too long, he's starting to take a little bit of line out every so often, so uh, we'll try and get some line back on him soon, no doubt. But uh, yeah, it should be a bit of fun and um, lead this guy to the boat. This kingfish was about to realise something was wrong and hit the afterburners. So we're getting pretty close to the boat now. Pretty close to vertical. Away we'll go. Straight up and down. Just be ready. Oh, there he is. There he goes. There he goes. And away oh. he goes. <laughs> Next minute. <laughs> Mate, you're right. Here's me thinking I was getting some line back on him. We'll let him take a bit of that. Hold him right away from the boat. He's going under the boat, so we're trying to keep him away from it. We'll let him take this line off us. Still wants to go, so we'll let him do that. Okay, let's see what we can get back off him now. Easy on him, he'll come up. There he goes. Okay, he's out there. 
I think apart from Adam, I've quite possibly got the best job in the world. How many people get to go fishing for a job? Okay, so we're starting to get this line back on him again. Got him just at the same position as we did before, and just like before, he's taken off again. Rightio, we've got this fish out to nearly 30 metres now. We're going to uh, stop and start really fighting him. Um, what we'll do is get another rod, rod and bait ready because quite often with kingfish being a schooling fish they will uh, travel out together and uh, you can often pick up another strike as you get that other fish closer to the boat. Yeah, he's, take, he's taking a bit of line, he's, he's pretty keen. The saltiga's pretty handy too. Rightio, Jamie, just take it easy on him. Don't, no need to be too brutal. Um, you've got him hooked. You don't want to. You don't know how well he's hooked. You don't want to rip the hook out the side of the drawer, so it's all nice and smooth. If you go hard on them, yep. often they'll go just as hard back. So just gently get him up to the boat, and when he wants to run, he'll run. But we just work him smoothly. Coming up, disaster strikes as we try to land Jamie's kingfish. <laughs> Jeez, this guy started off pretty soft and I, th I thought I was just going to wind him straight into the boat but uh, yeah, he's, he's definitely not, uh, he's not going along with what I want him to do. He's got a bit of weight behind him and he's just starting to play now so could be in for a bit of fun for the next while. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is awesome. Yeah, it's not like deep water jigging or live baiting where often you're doing it in close proximity to a reef. You can actually, uh, once you've worked these fish out into the deeper water and you know you're over a clear bottom, you can just, all, it, all it is is time on your side and away you go. So take it, take it easy, enjoy the fight and uh, hope you get a good fish, Jamie. Thank you. Hold it out. The fish was tiring and Richard was charged with landing it. It is a fact that a lot of good fish are lost beside the boat. It's important to work as a team and don't panic or rush to land the fish. Are you ready to go again? Yeah. I love 80 pound trace. He's a good eat. <laughs> going. Yeah, I've got him, I've got him, I've got him. I've got him away from the boat. I love 80 pound trace to trace. <laughs> Good fish. Hey, decent size, isn't it? Yeah. It was worth the wait on those little liveys this morning. Mm. Whoa. Come back under. Just trying to hold it. Just as Richard was preparing to gaff the kingfish, the gaff slipped out of his hand and sank to the bottom. I got him. Sorry about your gaff, bud. Anxious moments, Jamie. Yeah, I'm just hoping he's, he's pretty reliable, I've Richard, so no doubt he's going to get in the boat for me. Good man. That's where experience comes in handy. Look at that. Yeah. That's got to go. 18 kilos at least. Loving it. Yeah. <laughs> Damn, they've got a bite. <laughs> oh, that is brilliant. <laughs> Cheers, Heath, Marty. Good work. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> well done. A few anxious moments there, guys, but Jamie's got his kingfish, and all our work has paid off. You know, we've done all those little things right, and it's been hard conditions, you know, lovely day, but the fishing conditions have been hard, but we worked and worked and worked, and I tell you what, if you do it, you work hard, you get results. Oh, sorry, I'm still puffing. Um, Adam told me we're only after one big fish today and he's definitely right. Uh, easily the biggest fish I've ever caught, so more than happy. The guys on, on board have been outstanding and I'm just loving life, so yeah, awesome day. Well done, Jamie. The reality was Adam was under pressure. He had to deliver. It took about five hours, but we've gotten there. We got the fish we wanted. Well done, Adam. <laughs> Well, congratulations, Jamie. Nice kingy, mate. Well done. Thank you very much. Now, you've been asking me lots of questions all day, so and I think uh, our viewers will probably want to know all about these things too, so I'll share some of the kingfish tips that we're using to catch our fish. Now that we've caught one, yep, we can demonstrate. Obviously, you've got to catch the fish first. Now, the first decision I made today was leader. 
you, you've got a choice of leaders, right? Normally for kingies, you need a fairly solid leader because you're handling them beside the boat as you saw that Richard was doing. But because the conditions were calm and clear today, I decided to actually fish fairly light leader. I was fishing 80 pound Black Magic Tough Trace. Now, normally I'd recommend 100 to 200 pound, but I was trying to get a bite, so I went down to 80. There's a risk with 80 that you can get rubbed off or it's hard to handle beside the boat. But hey, it paid off, we got a fish. So that was my first tip, the leader choice. Now you also asked how long should your leader be? Yeah. Um, I'd say a minimum of 10 foot, but up to 20 feet. Okay, it depends how deep you want your live bait to swim around. And that's the other thing, we've been trolling our live bait so far, but now we're going to go and put two more out, and we're going to use a balloon on one, and we'll let the other free swim. And the benefit for that is that one will stay up on the surface, because it can only go 10 or 20 feet, and the other one can swim down and up as much as it likes. And ballooning a live bait, because um, we've only got small baits today, I've blown my balloon up fairly small, so there's not too much drag on it, not too much pressure, because if you had a big balloon and it's hard for it to pull around, it could, could kill it. Oh, it makes sense. Yep, yep, yep. Now, I'll get my trace here. So I've got my trace with my swivel, and what I've done is I've just looped with a half hitch and elastic band on there. So when I go to put my balloon on, I just half hitch again, put it on like this, and it's there ready to go. And that's got a bit of give so it doesn't break away unless a kingy comes along and eats your live bait. Okay. Pretty simple, and that keeps it at a fixed depth. That's the only reason you're using a balloon to stop it swimming down to the bottom, and it indicates when you're getting a strike sometimes. Okay. Okay. Pretty simple tips. Yeah, definitely now, handy. One more tip, we'll show you how to put a live bait on the hook because everyone wants to know how to do that. Yeah, definitely, sounds good. Rightio, first thing is get a good grip on your live bait because there's nothing worse than losing one over the side and watching kingfish come up and eat an untethered live bait. The next thing is the placement of the hook and that is crucial because a kingfish swallows its prey head first and scales it as it goes. So we've got to make sure that the point of the hook is is pointing upwards when the hook is being pulled out of the kingfisher's mouth. Well, there we go. <laughs> Alrighty, so I, I go on about a 45 degree angle like this and then make sure that there's no scales covering the hook. As you can see, the, the point of the hook is up off the fish and you can see that it will, as it pulls out of the kingfish, the point will go into the kingfish and not, if you come back the other way, it will go into the bait. Jamie's fish tipped the scales at 20.5 kilos, a really nice fish. We fished for a while longer and had a bit of action but no hookups. The tide had slowed and we were fishing on a full moon, which might explain why the fishing had been tough. So I thought we'd head home to my place so we could show you how to cut up and fillet a big fish like a kingfish to get it ready for cooking. Filleting a big fish like a kingfish or a tuna or a harpooka can be a pretty daunting task because I tell you what, it's a big piece of meat and you've got to break it down properly. Now a lot of people say, oh steak a kingfish, cutting it across the grain of the flesh. I don't like to do that because what happens when you do that, it lets all the moisture come out when you're cooking it. So what I prefer to do is break it down and this kingfish here we're going to smoke some of it and we're going to eat some of it as pieces. So I'm going to break it down into some pieces for smoking and some pieces for cooking. So I'll show you how I do it. The first thing I do is actually just fillet it like a normal fish. Preparation for filleting a big fish is key. Um, what you need is a, a good bin to put all your scraps and your fillets in until you break them down further. Keep them off uh, the ground or whatever and keep them clean. Um, and definitely a good filleting area. So I've got a big table here that I can fillet on, but a stainless bench, a worktop of some description is great. And the absolute essential is a really sharp knife. Now be careful with sharp knives when you're dealing with big uh, big game fish and things like that because it's so easy to slip and cut yourself. One of those mesh gloves is really handy, that can actually protect your hands and make it a lot easier to fillet your catch. So let's get on with filleting. The first cut is like normal, just up around the head. And don't be scared to get aggressive with your knife here. I've pre-gutted this fish. Now the first cut takes off the wing and the wing I will use for smoking. Don't be scared to break bones and bend things to get the things off. Wings are really good for smoking, they, they smoke up really well. Once you've taken the wing off, fillet it like you would any other fillet. Um, I'll show you, I've moved around to this side of the bench just to show you the cut lines to make it a bit simpler. So come in, down the backbone as you would with any other fish, all the way down. Now with a kingfish, cut about an uh, inch or so short of the tail and then, like you would with any other fillet, work your knife down, relieving the flesh from the bone. And I'm just working my way up, 
relieving the flesh and then I'm going to get to the rib cage and you need a bit of brute force to get through the rib cage and then you break every bone in the rib cage and the whole fillet will come off. Okay, so I've got the entire fillet off. Basically turn it over and do the exact same on the reverse side. So now I've filleted the kingfish, I've actually taken its head off. I've chopped up the frame into three pieces for the smoker. There's plenty of meat on the frame. And now all I'm going to do is break down a fillet even to, to more manageable portions. So what I like to do is you get sort of four distinct areas. You get the top half of the fillet, which has probably the best meat on it. The lower bottom part, portion by the tail is really good. The upper portion has the ribs in it, which probably makes the best area for smoking because it's a bit firmer. So what I do is I section it in half, just below where the ribs finish. Nice chopping board essential for this. And you can see that's a lot of thick meat there. Then I portion the tail section in half again. It's um, okay to trim your fish down and get rid of too much red meat because kingfish does have a lot of red meat. And then um, cut it into manageable sized portions after you skin it. So I'll do one little piece here. Skin it. All the offcuts I save for pet food and burleys, things like that. Skin the fillet. And the final preparation for cooking for me is uh, I portion it into... Uh, edible, manageable sized pieces rather than cutlets. Um, I just uh, slice it on the diagonal, which gives me good pieces for cooking. So if you slice on the diagonal and you give yourself a couple of things, you get nice manageable sized pieces that are the right thickness for cooking.